But I've noticed, uh, you know, two types of farmers, and I really suffer from a split personality because I'm both of them in a way. And I'm pr- I probably one type when I don't need to be and the other type when I don't need to be and I'm probably worse off for it. But around here we talk about farmers either being the English type farmer or the German type farming mentality. And um, uh, n- not picking on either one of them. I know, I know in certain areas are Swedish uh, farming uh, communities and, and other type. But just where we're at there's English and German and uh, my wife actually is the one that kind of you know brought it to my attention that you know the you know the English farmers cheap 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 let's produce as cheap as we can you know some of the some of the things about an English farmer it's good enough to get by that eh, doesn't work very good but it's good enough to get by and you know I look back in 2009 you know we had a tractor that was bought and paid for an older two wheel drive tractor yeah we had duels on it. But, you know, it's good enough to get by. If planting with that planter, fine, you know, handled it good, you know. But if we'd have had a mechanical front-wheel drive tractor, it would have really helped us out and probably made us enough money in 2009 to pay the difference. You know, and, and, and English farmers, too, you know, some of them, well, why, why spend the money on tile? When it's too wet, you know, you can't tile it, and then when it's dry, you don't need to tile anyway. So, um you know, kind of like putting rocks on the road. Well, when it's muddy, it's too muddy to haul the rock. And now that it's dry, we don't need the rock, so why put it down? Um, I also see English farmers that they'll sometimes repair something to the va- to, to more than the value that it's worth. You know, they'll have a piece of equipment that's only worth three thousand dollars, and now because it's going to cost ten to buy a new one or buy a newer one used, um, we'll put four thousand dollars parts in it. Well. <laughs> And, and that works to an extent, but also you have to remember in the long term of things, you probably just stuck four thousand dollars in parts into something that's only worth three thousand dollars. And I know you need to have it; it's got to work. But also on top of it, even broke down, you could maybe get one or two thousand dollars out of it. So you take the four you stuck into it, and the two you can get out of it. Now you got six thousand to the ten thousand that it would take to buy a, a, a different used one. It's a little bit better than what you had. Um, and so, so sometimes I, I watch that, you know, and, and anymore, as much as everybody's farming, you know, I call it downtime, anyone. You know, you can't be patching stuff together. You, time is so much money. I mean, I, I look at the day that Judy got 100 acres cut in soybeans this year with a 25-foot platform. You know, everything worked. Everything worked well. It run like sewing machine. It just moved on down the road. Nobody had to wait on anything. You know, and if you'd have had that, you, you know, it would not have got done. Um, you know, and, and I, 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 English farmers will run machinery into the point where it costs a whole lot of dollars to trade to, to get something newer. Now, a lot of times they'll try to save up the money to trade all at once, but, you know, the value of this machinery anymore, it, it, can, um, it, can, it can be very expensive. You know, uh, uh, you know, penny thrifty but pound foolish. Um, now looks not important the dollars are a lot of English farmers or what I'd call an English farmer you know they go up to their place it doesn't look very successful it's not very you know they are very successful the only problem with that unless you own a lot of your ground and and unless you uh, have some relationships with some landlords and other people anymore you somewhat have to look successful to convince people that you're successful and you need to be taking care of the ground. You know, you come up with something, you know, the old Jeff Foxworthy, you know, the motor swinging from a chain in the tree in the front yard. Um, you know, those guys are thrifty. Uh, now, I understand that. It wouldn't bother me to rent ground to somebody like that if I know they took good care of the ground and farmed well and stuff. But, you know, looks looks are maybe a little more important than they used to be but i will say too that i'm not a big one for mowing roads i, I mow them up some but uh, i got other things to do like bale hay and run cattle and take care of stuff like that in the in the summertime and i see farmers you know mowing roads with lawnmowers and that's a good way to to wear out a perfectly good lawnmower um now English farmers do have, you know, I, I know some guys that have what I call the Dave Ramsey theory long before Dave Ramsey had it. You save to have it. And if you don't have it saved up, you just don't have it. 
uh, and this depression thinking, a lot of those guys got and survived through the depression. It was tough. Um, but also, they're successful. They're really successful. But sometimes of what non-money cost. You know, I've seen them bust themselves down. I've seen them, uh, you know, work themselves and their wives into the ground where they had the money to spend things to maybe make their life a little easier. I, me- I remember a livestock farmer, and this would have been in the late 70s, early 80s. He still had a tricycle front-end tractor with a trip John Deere uh, manure bucket. You know, that you, where you only raised the arms up and down. You couldn't tilt the bucket, and you had to trip it. And, uh, um, you know, the, the fact he finally bought him an old gas 3010 that had a 148 loader on it with a hydraulic bucket, and he thought he was an hog heaven. Um, of course, now you get one with mechanical front wheel drive, and you really got something. But, you know, uh, he, he as he got older, and I still remember he had to have shoulder, shoulder surgery. And I still think it was all them years of tripping that bucket and jerking on that thing. Yeah, he bailed hay, too, and he cut weeds out of the beans, and he did a lot of other stuff. But uh, they raised a lot of cattle, a lot of hogs. They hauled a lot of manure with that old tricycle front end, and, and that had to just beat him up. And I know he had enough money to just go write the John Deere dealer or the international dealer or whoever, whatever dealer a check to, to pick up a, a good loader tractor. You know, um, you know. The, also, you know, the, the, they had the, you know, labor was cheaper than machinery, and that worked for a long time. But anymore, um, you know, it's getting hard to get some good people. Now, I can get all kinds of cheap labor you want, and if you got good enough machinery, that it's hard, you know, they can tear it up too. But I mean, it, it does some things, and also. Uh, I know some farmers that have had to literally trade for better machinery when they got bigger and got a hired man because a hired man wasn't going to work for them unless they had decent enough equipment. Because, you know, that, that hired man's like, I'm just making so much an hour, I'm not going to be out here on a tractor without a cab and air conditioning and a stereo. Sorry, I can go work for somebody else that's got better equipment. So that's that's maybe changed the game a little bit. Now, now let's go to the German type. Gotta love them. Um... They may have to have it just because the neighbors do. Now, I know uh, one community, I won't even mention the name, it's not too far away from me, and one implement dealer says, I just got to get one of two guys to buy whatever piece of equipment it is, and I can sell eight more in that neighborhood. Because if one of those two guys get it, the other eight have to have it. And he said, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter how good it is, doesn't matter if it works. If I can sell one of these two, um, I can do it. Uh, the German type of farmer, nice looking place, maybe a little too nice. I've seen guys sell 80, 160 acres of farm ground so they can build a nice house and a nice farmstead. You know, impressions, 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 but you got to sometimes pay for those impressions. Um, I also, what I call the German type, they have a little bit of trouble with something they just trade. I ain't going to mess with it. I'm just going to get rid of it. And that's good to a point. And, and, and if it's something that's really a lemon or something, I, I agree with that. But sometimes you just need to tinker with something just a smidgen bit and go through it once or twice a year and, and the things goes. Uh, looks are important to them. Doesn't sometimes matter whether they make any money or not. But boy, looks are, my, are important. Um, they got to borrow to have it, or they will borrow to have it. Um, now, I'll, I'll pick on Dan Miller. They're, they're not always the Dan Miller. You know, Dan Miller has always said before, if you borrowed $10,000 to be able to make another $100,000, why wouldn't you borrow $10,000? Um, but uh, sometimes they borrow more than they should. Uh, the German types buy it and figure out how to pay for it later. Uh, I've kind of falling into that uh, thinking a couple times in my life uh, non-depression thinking uh, sometimes you're stretched to the limit at times now it's really good when you got a go-go time like we're going down you know what um, in 2004 2005 2006 if we'd all got a lot of german thinking german farming type thinking in us and went out here and bought every bit of farm ground we could and then it would have doubled or tripled in price here in the last couple of years we'd all been a whole lot better off uh, so, 
you know, uh, you know, they stretch it to the limit at times. Um, successful but stressful. They're successful. Things are a little bit easier. We don't have many breakdowns. Got a little bit better equipment. Got a nice looking place. But boy, when it comes time to gra- to gathering up the money to pay for some of this, it's it's tough. So I kind of suffer from both of those. I kind of have parts of the same, of both of the English thinking farmer and the German thinking farmer. Of course, I, I kind of say that because my, my mother's parents who farmed were the German type, and my father was an English type, and so I got a genetic uh, farming code that's in conflict with itself. Uh, now, one, one of the things, though, my dad had said, always said about tools and little things like that, and I, and I do that, you know, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And a lot of times, like if I break a chain and I need a certain type of link, I'll get two or three of them, and I got I got three chain boxes now with chains in. And if I break down on a Sunday afternoon and there's no dealer open, I may have a shot at having that piece of chain. Uh, different kinds of odd pins in that. We may get an extra one. Um, you know, I, I also like to talk about the farmers that you know run around in overhauls with holes in their knees and a, a busted up jacket, and they could buy everybody in the room two or three times over. But, but it does upset me at times. There, there's some rich farmers out there that way overplay the poor farmer. Oh, I'm this poor, downtrodden, beaten up, you know, poor farmer. And, and farmers out there that are successful, you don't have to flaunt it. But don't go around telling everybody you're broken, you're poor, when everybody knows you're not. When everybody knows that you got more money in the bank than the bankers got. When everybody knows that the, every time you buy a farm about once every three or four years, you just pay cash. Uh, you don't have to go bragging that you're doing it, but you also don't have to tell everybody you're broke. Um, well, th- this kind of a little year, year in review. I'd like to hear back from you if you're an English type farmer or a uh, German type farmer, or maybe some of you people up north that uh, are Swedish type farmers. Uh, just kind of how you are there. That, you know, like I said, this this is a little bit lighter topic. Not talking about the farm bill. Not 